Mr. Wonderful, a.k.a. Kevin O'Leary, uh, who uh, was a paid spokesman for FTX, uh, he said this last week, it was kind of shocking, that he was asked again if he would back Sam Bankman-Fried in his next crypto venture. And he called him one of the most brilliant traders in the crypto universe. And ap apparently O'Leary and his minions used um, this platform, FTX, and said it was very robust. It gave his team great information from which to trade on. Of course, not to trade well on because he lost all his assets in FTS International. O'Leary himself said the assets went to zero. If SPF knocked on your door again, and said, look, I failed in my last venture. Uh, I have a new crypto venture. I need money. Would you back him? That's a great question. No one's asked me yet. I think we can all admit, you, you can love him or hate him given what's happened, but he was one of the most brilliant traders in the crypto universe. He also built one of the most robust platforms. We used FTX actively. It was a very robust platform. Uh, that allowed us to get information on a compliant basis. So I really like what he built. Um, would you back him? The answer would be yes. Now let's break down what he said there. He called SBF one of the most brilliant traders in the crypto universe. SBF's trading company just went bankrupt and took down the robust exchange that O'Leary is talking about, FTX. Uh, again, O'Leary was a paid spokesman for FTX, um, and he said that FTX was the one crypto exchange he would trust compliance-wise. Again, that take did not age well. Now, O'Leary was, was the... also... Sorry. No, go ahead, Ryan. Sorry, I'll ask later. Well, he was also asked if he thought in the same interview, Sam Bankman-Fried would end up in jail. So he paused and said, I don't know. So I'm going to get this straight. He is still thinks there's a very reasonable chance that SBF may end up in jail for his actions running FTX and helping run Alameda, his trading company, and yet he still would back him. I, I just, he went on to describe the way that he would run a business with SPF. He, SPF would not have operational control. He would have trading control in this business venture that O'Leary has, I guess, in his head. Uh, his trading company went bankrupt. I don't, I don't know. What the F is O'Leary talking about? I'm sorry. You're not structuring this in a clever way. It's a stupid take. Yep. Perhaps uh, the answer sticks to O'Leary's brand. He's all about the almighty dollar. And perhaps he would, again, be a paid shill for this new operation. Uh, he just doesn't give a rat's ass about anybody who may be losing money on this, you know, who lost money on the crypto exchange or investing uh, through any of the um, shit tokens, I'm sorry, that, that were created by this company. I used to really like Kevin O'Leary's takes on Dragon's Den and the Shark Tank, where he would not invest in anything if it didn't produce strong cash flow and growth and he paid a reasonable price for it. That really speaks to me. And, you know, kind of Keystone generally, he, he seems to have really gone off brand of late with the whole whole hog backing of cryptos, given the fact that cryptocurrencies do not produce cash flow in its, themselves. It's hard for him using his strategy to value them. He really seems to kind of be flailing here and frankly looks out of his element. I'm sure he was paid well to promote these ex this exchange and its worthless coins, but Doubling down, to me, that's the part. Just say you made a mistake and move on, but doubling down on SBF, to me, it's not a good look. Um, I, to quote himself, I think that his doubling down and SBF should be taken out by Harn the barn and shot, and that's all that should happen here, but that's just nice. not, not what has like occurred. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, I don't know what to make of that. I mean, if I go back to you know, kind of the start of my career in finance, I remember watching O'Leary and Amanda Lang on, on business news. And yeah. I, I mean, I, I enjoyed the content back then, but as I actually, you know, began to develop a clue of how the finance industry worked, a lot of the things that he said, I just felt were inconsistent and really didn't make a lot of sense. But I don't understand why 
you would make these statements about such a failed investment without, you know, some type of clarification in terms of like what went wrong? What did you learn? Did you learn anything? But I think one of the things with O'Leary is that he's built up this persona that just is completely, completely based on, on his ego. I mean, he named himself Mr. Wonderful. Like who it's like, it's like, it's like one of us naming ourselves Mr. Genius or something like that. who does that, right? Well, that's so for somebody, do. well, Aaron somebody, does around the office, but yeah, that's, yeah, but that's not a publicly. Story. Yeah, it's true. Not publicly, at least, though, at least, at least true. It's true. Not, not, I, not I, dumb I keep, enough to I, do that, right? I keep my craziness behind closed <laughs> yes. doors, at least. At least, good that idea sense to do that, yeah. right? At this, so point. I mean, to me, part of being a, a good investor is understanding you are going to make mistakes now and again, right? And and just accepting that and learning and figuring out, well, what is the lesson that I can learn from this, you know, so I don't repeat that same mistake again? It would have been nice if he at least reflected on that a little bit or or even, uh, even you know, presented the idea that there was a lesson to be learned. But it didn't think, it didn't seem, it just seemed like, as you said, Ryan, he's yeah. doubling down. Um, and and, and, and he, is, he his, has... His ego and... Yeah, yeah. And, and avoiding the cognitive dis- dissonance that comes from making a bad decision. Yeah, you made yeah. a bad decision. And once again, like if if you're a person, if you're an investor who says you want to know what, I believe in cash flow, but I've got like two percent, five percent of my portfolio, whatever it is, that I just throw on these speculative moonshot bets. Like if that's your perspective, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that because you're recognizing that these are essentially gambles. So you're allocating a very small percentage of your portfolio. Um I, I just don't, I don't have a clue what he's saying or what he's thinking. Yeah, I mean, he, I I'm mean, not going to spend much time on it. No, perhaps. Um, I mean, he has backed a you know a TSX I think or TSX Venture listed company, Wonderfy, and perhaps there's just some you know now he's so entrenched in the industry. Although you know you, you could promote your own ventures rather than something by SBF like. Going out, figure out saying, a way to actually make it profitable and make it make sense. Or if yeah. it's not profitable, just say, "Listen, this is pure speculation." We're just and in that case, some play money in that case, yeah, in that case, we've looked at Wonderfy, um, yeah. and you know they they had three million, three point three million in revenue in the last quarter. The operating loss on that business was eleven point three million, and that was not the re- revaluation of digital assets like you see in many of these companies. The revaluation of digital assets. Was only seven hundred and eleven thousand of that loss of the eleven plus million loss in this business on three point three million in revenues. So you know this company is not creating cash flow. And if we looked at it from and we do look at it from a fundamental perspective, you know right now we wouldn't touch it from a with a ten foot pole. I mean, and you can you can look at what the share price on this business has done. Over the course of this year, to destroy capital, it started the year at two forty six. It's at twenty one cents. Wonderfy Technologies (WNDR) on the TSX. Um, you know, for us, it's not surprising when you see the significant losses there. So, how, perhaps um, Kevin is so entrenched in the industry, um, he just, you know, is saying only positive things. Although, you know, he he called for regulation in the sector in the immediate wake of this and. You know, said he was going to Washington to call for regulation. But to say that when asked the question on SPF, do you think he's going to jail? Eh, I don't know. Like saying that you think there's a good likelihood, potentially it's 50-50, he may be going to jail. Mm-hmm. But I still would back him again. What the sorry, hell are you was, talking about? This was, the like, exchange, this was the crypto exchange that took customer deposits and used them for the trading account. Am I correct? Yes. Correct. Right. Yes. And and this is the company that he highlights for having, uh, you know, great regulatory oversight. Compliance. Yeah. Well, he, he talked, I think, about the the SBF's parents or, or somebody involved with being uh, like lawyers who drafted, um, uh, you know, regulation. And it's just it's just anyway. It's, who cares who somebody parent, who's, who cares about who any of that? Are. You're not just, investing in the parents. You're investing in the. I think Anyways. he may, there's a chance that he may go to jail and I'm backing him. Like it, yeah. within a minute of the same comment, I just, it just scratched, I scratched my head. Like, is it really all about ego here? Like that would be insane. Just. Oh, I, I, I think that it is. And I mean, I've always kind of looked at O'Leary as kind of a, I don't know, in a way, like a poor man's mini Trump kind of like, that's the persona that he was trying to get. And like, you know, Trump would never admit that he was wrong about anything. Now right? we're getting like, into trouble. 
Oh, yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> just... but, but, it's, but it's true. Like, he would never, right? Like, it, 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 it would, and I kind of just see that. Maybe that's what the issue with O'Leary. Now, should I be psychoanalyzing this guy? Probably not. Yeah. But um, this is just my, you know, my impression from seeing his persona on TV. And and I just, yeah, it I, seems like I love the has... cash flow. I, lo- I love that whole push. I loved the persona around that. And if just sticking to that, I, I would be I would be very happy to continue to like it, but you know here here it just doesn't look good. Yeah, yeah. And there's still time to come out and just say you know what I was wrong once again. Or we have some lessons to learn. Or yeah. I put in one. Everybody does. Of my like, fund or less than one percent, so it's one, something we can. One take thing that on. we talk about and try to teach the guys in the office all the time, and the, everybody in our office all the time is if we've dealt with a firm in the past, like a public company that we've interviewed management team. And then we've seen them do something that either that we think is untoward, that we don't approve of, or they've gotten trouble with regulators or anything like that. They've had guidance that they completely, you know, they completely missed. And and not because there was an extraneous circumstance, because management was being dishonest, in our opinion. We will not invest in that company's second venture or third venture because it speaks to the uh, intellectual quality of the people in terms of, you know, it takes a certain type of character to do some of the things that people do in finance that you see do and, and you don't like to see. And we just won't invest in their second venture. It's, I think it's something you learn over time with experience. In this case, you've seen somebody do something and then you're doubling down on them. And that makes me angry that somebody yeah. would even, you know, come to that conclusion because in his case, there's a ton of people that follow his advice. And I think it's irresponsible. So, I mean, I think, you know, but we can joke around about it's, it. It's but all It's all about still. investing in the energy of the entrepreneur, right? He had great energy, so. Yeah, yeah like that's, there's that's been a wonderful. bunch of rumors. Had a good, had a, had a good feeling in my gut. Like on, um, on Twitter, there was this guy named Ben Armstrong who started this thing called BitBoy Crypto, from my understanding. And he essentially says, shocking Kevin O'Leary bombshell. I'm hearing he was visited by a group of people who are forcing him to say positive things about SBF under the threat of physical violence and blackmail. Kevin then responds to him on Twitter and says, basically, this is total BS. Uh, no. And now, again, I used to like Kevin. I don't of course, like that's what, what he'd doing. say if this was happening. We're kidding. We're not <laughs> Sorry, who is this, this guy, Brennan, who um, made this comment? Ben Armstrong. His Somebody on is, the internet made a comment. He, he's a questionable guy. Uh, just, he's a big... Yeah, he he's is like credible. A big, okay. No, he's, yeah, he's, like he's a, questionable he's, at times. He's questionable. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, he's like a okay. big Bitcoin and crypto fanboy. Yeah. But essentially, what, what I don't like is, you know, all of a sudden, the, these guys are going back and forth at each other. All right now, Kevin O'Leary, you're really pissing me off, he says. And they're going back and forth. And Kevin <laughs> says, bring it on, It's a Bozo. pissing match. I yeah. eat guys like you for lunch. I'm sorry, Kevin. <laughs> uh, don't the only the thing that yeah, yeah the, the thing that I that I like that I think that. is is stupid about that is just that O'Leary is spending his time doing exactly. it. Exactly. For this exactly. Bitcoin guy, for sure it makes sense for him. Yeah. I mean oh, that's that's smart yeah. move. I mean He's getting him to respond. Get, we we we'd get in a Twitter battle with O'Leary right now, but I was <laughs> figured I just figured he wouldn't be dumb enough to take the bait. But I, I mean if he is apparently he, he might be. I know. Ryan, right, you're on Twitter. Maybe, send something out. Yeah. He'll see this and start ripping. That'll send out my Trump comment. <laughs> that'll, that'll trigger him. Yeah. Oh, God. Anyways, right. Kevin, we're calling you to still come out and say you made a stupid statement. Mm-hmm. You're going you're gonna to do- double back and say, you know, I wouldn't back him again. It's yeah. not a smart move. J- and J- and just- investors shouldn't do that. If you have a company that you've invested in, a, a small micro cap, a large firm, a, a mining company, and the management team did something stupid or did something that you think um, could be fraudulent, you know, came out with guidance that was just well beyond anything that is reasonable. Stop investing in that, the, the management team's second and third and fourth bent, ventures. You will do yourself a big favor long term. Stick with quality management teams that have track records over time or new teams that continue to hit on their guidance over the long term. This will serve you well investing. Do not do what Kevin is doing here and doubling down on somebody who does something that's at all shady. It's just not smart. So that, yeah. that's what we're trying to get at here today, if we yeah. want to put it simply. Final all right, question let's move for on. O'Leary. Final question for O'Leary. <laughs> Would you still back his next venture if he goes to jail and yes, starts his venture that. from inside prison? 
Well, yes. I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> well, He's also. a brilliant trader, although he did lose. Oh, Very optical. <laughs>